Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and tonight we are playing some Atari 2600 games. Let's put that over there, beside Bernie. There you go, Bernie. Ah, uh, alone again, yes! But that's okay, we must soldier on. Tanya's at a work thing. I've got the cats. I do have a co-host. This is Atari. Uh, you can't really see him right now, but uh, he is there. Atari needs a nameplate. Oh, I should have done that. That would have been good. Tonight we're going to be playing three updated slash new Atari 2600 games. The first one is Frantic by Daryl Spice Jr. He recently updated it. Cat, what are you doing? Sprite. He's attacking the camera stand. Uh, second one is Tray 4 by uh, Jab. And the third one, Shattered Earth by Cario Jimbo. So uh, three fun games. So we'll be playing those tonight. But first, I want to thank the Twitch subscribers who are scrolling down the screen there. Massive numbers of them. 80. Oh, my God. Uh, so here we go. 80 names. Yeah. Are you going to say them out, Sprite? Sprite's going to say them out, apparently. He is talking up a storm. A cardboard box, Aldefer, uh, Andrew, Atari, Arkham H, 7, uh, Arms Guard Coder, Atari, Downers, XL, Rules, Atari, 74, Atari, Jabbar, Atari's Maximus, Beef Supreme, Beer Polka, Buffalo, Pinball, Charles, Donnie Mel, Charles, Wynn, Chitlala, Cole Patch, Colonel Lama, Crew Neck Lion, Cubanismo, Dianoid, Danifacy, Drexel, Dr. Mook, Hells, Gamma Dev, Glenn Main, Great Defender, Groucho Burge, uh, Homebrew, Homeboy 1, Ivor Tower, Dedekai, Johnny WC, Camillo, and Kenzo, Carl G, Ken Jennings, Invader, Karka 2600, Lambda Express, Lord DTZ, Mark Gohannes, Mark Spacing, Metal Atari, Mick Muse, Mike Soul, Mike Thomas, Command, MK Smith, Mud 3, Ma Mr. Zarwu, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Strum, Neo Mini, Nostalgia, Patrick, Dave, Prow 7, Koog, Arsh, Anschwitz, Raymond CRC70, Rendered Ghost, Beltless Feed, You've Recorded Pim, Rod Castle, Six Sweet Sledge, Hammer, Smith, Beast, Spice Wars, Spin, Lease, S, Ramirez, Test, and Rocking, T Flock, D Train, Tiki Down, K, T Flows, Token Monster, Trek, and Vexor X, Vintage Gaming Memories, Vitoko, VVG Double Down, X, Ken X, so many names. Oh, you're punishing me. But thank you so much for supporting the show and the cats, mostly the cats. That's why you're here, isn't it? Yes. If you want to support the show as well, you can click subscribe down below. It is a long list. I said I'd do something at 75. I would alter it in some way, but I haven't figured out what to do with that because I can't tell. Uh, what is how many is my upper limit of how many I can say infinite I suppose um, but uh, it just takes longer that's all um, it's free with Amazon Prime you don't have to pay a thing if you have Amazon Prime if you want to support the show goal is 100 I just upped it from 75 since we passed it oh thank you Jedekiah good evening to you as well just to repeat the important names the, the names that start with K right Carl um I do have a poll question. Um, I didn't type it in, so we're gonna have to do this live. We're gonna do it live. Oh, watch out, watch out kittens. Um, it kind of has to do with PRGE, but indirectly, I know, I know what you want. I know exactly what, I know exactly what you want, but you can't have it right now. No, we're doing a poll. No, we can't. Uh, the question is, do you keep a list of have slash want for your video games or consoles, etc. Uh, one, yes. Two, yes, but poorly maintained. Three, no. Four, uh, no, but I know what I need. Oh, no, sorry. No, but I know what I need and five no I sometimes buy doubles and there we go start the poll off I do um oh break out the patch sash I didn't get the patch I played um crackpots last night and I almost got there I I increased my score from 50 out of 75 to 65 out of 75 for crackpots doing better hey 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 he's attacking himself do not attack him don't attack let's go there we go so i do keep a list um is it maintained it is maintained but poorly <laughs> so i'm gonna have to pick number two uh 
maintain, I do keep a list of what I have and what I want, and they're both not completely updated. But for PRGE, I, I kind of have like a list of like super wants of which I don't think I'll find, but I might find, I hope I'll find, um, kind of given up on the long shots, especially if you go to a convention where it's something that's, you know, it's going to sell for six or seven or $800. And you're like, Oh, maybe I'll find it for two or three. No, not at a convention. You'll find that at a, a garage sale for two or three or even less. Cause they don't even know what it's worth. Yeah. So we got some people that have a list, RC70. I have a few double 2600 games not worth thinking about when it's just $3. Yeah, I used to buy doubles all the time when I didn't have a list. Um, and they, they were just cheap things. But um, Rod Caster says, I, can, I have a keep a complete inventory database, not much for games, but for hardware because each tells a story. Yeah, I've added hardware into mine as well. Um, just because it's easier just to remember what I have because it's like oh what mods did I do on that one and which one is that modded it's, it's at the junior which ones yeah so I try and keep a good list of the hardware as well because there's hardware I want to buy as well um, Carl doesn't keep it a list but uh, his long distant partner does which is close enough hey as long as somebody in the house is keeping of it uh, keeping the list beer pocock no that's why I have two copies yeah um okay so um let's get to the mail and i do have a piece of mail today i hadn't checked it in quite a while so it was about time are you excited for this sprite watch out for the scissors okay let's open this up i think i know what it is because i ordered it it's not too many things i order usually one at a time sometimes two at a time Let's see. Mail call. Oh, there we go. And it is what I think it is. We're going to go to the cat cam so that I can unbox it on the cat cam here. In big. Let's see. Is that good? There we go. Okay. So let's unbox this part first. It is either an AVG cart or a sub cart. And it's a sub cart is checked off. This is a brand new cartridge for the Atari 8-bit. So let's just pop this out so we can take a look at that. There we go. The sub cart. And I do already have an AVG cart, but there's a one specific thing that I got the, well, there's not much point taking this out, but I will. One specific thing that I got this for, and we'll go over it in a second. There it is, there's the sub cart. And it came with some candy, apparently. I'll have to look up what this is. Tureki Med and Slavia candy, not sure. Um, and then there's some a bunch of cabling that came with this as well, and probably an invoice, which I will not show. Just make sure it's an invoice. Might be like, thank you for purchasing this product. Not an invoice, but yeah, invoice. Yeah, yeah, there we go. So it came with an ECI cable, a PBI cable, a DAC audio cable, which is the thing I bought it for and an SIO cable, which I already have an SIO cable for the AVG cart, but it's best to have two in case I want to use them both at the same time. So let's take a look at what the AVG cart is. Uh, no, we haven't started betting yet, so you haven't missed it, Gamma Dev. Nobody has triggered the cats yet. Um, so here's the sub cart on the web page that sells it under Miss Retro. Miss Retro? Uh, 95 euros, um, only two left in stock. Um, so the difference is pre compared to the AVG card. Let's see, can I get this bigger? There we go, that's good. More onboard RAM, allowing expanding the Atari to one 
1088K in all scenarios, not only ATR, including 16K stock Atari 600 XL, or provide a four megabyte Axlon compatible memory expansion. So I, in my PAL system right there, I do have a, a one UMB. So I already have a megabyte in there, but if you buy this subcart, it comes with a meg built into it. Oh my God, that is super convenient. Uh, Built-in battery backed RTC with X SDX driver, optional DAC cable that allows stereo pokey slash Kovox emulation. And that's why I bought it because I, my PAL system doesn't have stereo out. It only has mono out. So this will allow my system now to have stereo pokey. Yes, it's going to be so awesome. There was a game that I ran the other day that literally wouldn't work if you didn't have stereo pokey. So that was like, oh my God, I have to get stereo pokey now. So I was like looking into buying the chip and installing the chip. And then this came up and I was like, oh, that's absolutely perfect. And shout out to Pseudo Graphics for alerting me to this uh, cartridge. And here's the discussion in the Atari Age forums thread for the subcart, firmware announcement, bug reports, and it goes over the differences compared to the AVG cart. There's the latest firmware. And I have prepared, I'm going to plug this in at the end of the show and just take a look at it because I, I made something that's not specific to the subcart, um, but it is something that might be cool to check out, um, but I won't tell you what it is right now, but we'll leave it to the end of the show so we don't interrupt the flow. Um, so let's get on with the rest of uh, the news. Actually, let's take a look at the voting. Looks like everybody is pretty much finished voting. So the question was, do you keep a list of your have wants for video for your video games and video game hardware? Uh, tiny number, 17% said yes, they keep a list. 5% uh, yes, but yes, but poorly maintained. So you have to add those together. Um, so that's 22% or 23% with the straggling points. Uh, and then 41% said, no, they don't keep a list. They just, they just don't bother. It's okay. They'll get doubles. No, but I know what I need. 11%. And no, I sometimes buy doubles. 23%. So a lot of people do not keep a list. It does look like an injected plastic case. It looks really, really nice. So, and, and I know there are injected plastic cases for 8-bit. Um, yeah, this is definitely injected. This is not 3D printed. It's very, very nice. And it's the exact same case as my AVG card. I didn't really buy that too long ago. Um, so, what's the first piece of news? It is Turbo Arcade is going to be released in box at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. This is from Champ Games, uh, a brand new game. We debuted it on the show and played it not too long ago on the show, an updated version. Uh, it is absolutely stunning, absolutely amazing game. Um, so you notice it doesn't say 20, uh, 2600 anywhere on here, which is in interesting. No Atari, no 2600. Um, and I, I'm guessing he is assuming that everybody who is buying this kind of knows what they're getting and knows what system it plugs into. Actually, it works in a 7800 and the cartridge size is pretty specific, so you really can't go wrong. Um, so it says, we are pleased to show the final box art for the upcoming release of Turbo Arcade for the Atari 2600. The game features stunning artwork created by Nathan Strum. Nathan Strum did the uh, artwork there, and who also did the graphics and the sound for the game. A limited number of Turbo Arcade cartridges will be available this October at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo at our Champ Games booth, which is going to be beside the Atari Age booth, and will be on display to try out as well, along with our other games. The full release will include the game cartridge with full color label, box, manual, and poster. We plan on adding the boxed game to our Champ Game store in December, as well as the full ROM. So there we go. 
Champ Games is now selling their games in box, at least this one for now, on the Champ Games website starting in December and starting at PRGE. So uh, it is absolutely a must have if you love racing games. It is so, so good. Um, and RC70 says, speaking of impulse buys. Um, so there you go. That was announced a couple days ago. And uh, another release, I think the 12th game to be announced by Atari Age. It's going to be released at the Portland, Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Robot Zed from Sprybug, who also made Princess Rescue, Zippy the Porcupine, the infamous two games, is going to make its debut this year at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Here's a render of the box. Um, and if you can't make it to the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, Robot Zed will be available in the Atari Age store in November. Um, this is inspired by Mega Man. It's absolutely an uh, incredible game. It's been in the works since 2014, and it's got eight different, eight different worlds, seven, a bunch of different worlds that you can travel to, of course, like the lava world, the ice world, desert world, all the worlds that you're um, uh, used to getting from uh, these types of platforming games. It's super awesome. Sprybug did an absolutely incredible job. Scared of putting works on Atari in the box, even though it was settled law in 1980 that Activision and everyone else could be could put works, uh, Gamma Dev said this, works on the Atari VCS in your box with no legal issue. I think they'd be more scared of Sega, although it's an ab abandoned trademark, or are they dropping the Atari label out of pure spite? Good question for uh, uh, John there, because I would have thought he would have put like compatible with or works uh, well, you wouldn't put Atari VCS because now that's been confused a little bit. Um, but Atari 2600 or 2600 compatible systems or something. I don't know. I don't know why he left that off. Um, but uh, who did the box art? Oh, um, I think he did it himself. Sprybug. There it is. Um, labeled on the front there. Uh, and, and he's attached made with Batari Basic on the back it is a really really fun game with multiple weapons uh, bosses at the end really great um and i interviewed him uh, about that game at prg 2022 yes that's noisy bad cat bad cat um and speaking of interviews at prg 2022 i released my muddy funster interview uh yesterday on youtube if you want to go check that out after the show uh i talked with muddy funster about his latest releases and it's almost wrapped around again because i talk about releases that are coming out this year for him um like exo so that is still relevant <laughs> which is great uh i think i have three more interviews to get done before prge starts again <laughs> uh which gives me one a week i think i can do it i'll do it i'll get it done um New release updated of Big PEMU. This is the Jaguar emulator by Rich Whitehouse. Version 1.09 was released a couple days ago. The new feature list is vast, he says, but perhaps the most insane entry is the new script, which adds multiplayer up to 32 players to Alien vs. Predator. Uh, this release also features networked multiplayer for any two to eight player Jaguar game. So you can play Jaguar games that originally uh, were available to play networked. You can play them over the internet with Big PMU, um, which is absolutely incredible. So you can do it like right now, download the, well, not after the show, um, <laughs> download Big PMU, load up the game in the emulator, um, and then play with your friends online through the emulator. Absolutely incredible. Um, so that's available for downloading. Uh, he's added so many features. Um, if you go to the webpage, you can, and, uh, um, so you can see here, oh, let's meet that. Um, there's a little, uh, example of two, um, a multiplayer, uh, of Alien vs. Predator there. And you can see it's absolutely instant right away. Super, super fast. That's so, so awesome. 
Um, and that's all the news. So let's get to the first game, which is Frantic by Daryl Spice Jr. Spiceware. And this is kind of two games in one. It's, it's both time. Berserk. Yum, oh, yum, 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 yum. Oh, the cries of the cats. What do you want? You want treats? What? You do? Okay, well, let's start the... Uh, Let's start the betting up. Let's start that betting. Yes. Who will be the favorite tonight? Last night? Well, the past four has been Sprite. The Sprite has been just dominating. But people still believe in Atari. They're still going for him. So let's start the predictions. There we go. Click at the top and click on predict in the chat. If you don't see it, you might have pop-up blockers or something. Some people aren't seeing it and they keep thinking it is pop-up blockers. So you might have to exclude Twitch chat from the pop-up blockers because there's no pop-ups in the Twitch chat, as far as I know. Can You can bet half on Atari and half on Sprite, but, ooh, that's an interesting thing. Doesn't appear in the mobile app, what? Oh, I don't know if it would work for me. Let me just try it on my mobile app. Uh, streaming, Twitch, turn down the volume, go to my stream. There we go. No, it uh, pops up on mine. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know what's going on there if it's not popping up on yours. Uh, it uh, came up on mine, and I'm using Android. You can't bet on both. Oh, once you bet, you locked into your choice. Okay, you can add more to it, but can't switch. You probably can't. I put 300 on Sprite. So, the thing is, if everyone bets on Sprite, all you have to do is put 10 on him, the smallest amount, like which I think at the minimum is 10. And if he wins, you win all the Sprite bets. So there's a little bit of um, game theory going on. <laughs> and um, people want to vote at the last second as well. So you got to um, you got to time it up right. So let's get the scores and the betting on the screen. It is... Uh, Oh, just ran out. There we go. It's talking too much. So the betting is seven people on Atari. They still believe in you. Good kitty. And five on Sprite. Uh, 35,000 on Sprite. 11,000 on Atari. So let's get the bells going. Are you ready, cats? Are you ready? Got to trap Atari in here because he wanders out. Are you ready? Sprite, you got to get up. There you go. Okay. You guys ready? I have to get the, I have to do this very, very trickily because I got to watch you guys and I got to give out the treats. Okay. And do the scores. Oh my God. Okay. You ready? There you go. And Sprite's off to the races with one. There we go. Atari hasn't rang it. Oh, he's moving the bell. No, don't move the bell. Come on, hit it. Sprite's got another one. Oh, both of them get it. There you go. I could listen by tone, but I'm not sure which one's it. Oh, Sprite gets another one. Oh, Atari's is a little bit lower. Atari gets it up to two points. Sprite oh, is on it. Four points. Come on, ring the bell, Atari. You can do it. Catch up. No, Sprite gets another one. Oh, a very soft one from Atari. There we go. Sprite's looking at him and he's jealous. So he rings it again. There we go. And Atari's very far from his bell. He's coming closer. Oh, Sprite gets it and Atari gets it. Oh, Sprite accidentally got two. Uh, did I give them points? I don't think I did. Uh, and it's eight to four. Oh, Atari got one. Sprite got one again. I think I'll add the points after. And Sprite gets it again, and it's 10 points. Game over. And kitties get...
some consolation prizes. There you go. So Sprite won again. Not a big surprise. Everybody was believing in you, Atari. It's very sad. Very sad. I'm going to go wash my hands. I'll be back in five seconds. Right, dominated, dominated yet again. Let's dole out those points to everyone who believed in you. There we go. Choose the outcome, Sprite, boom. There we go, so who won? So it was five people bet on Sprite and the biggest better was Snoo too. with 25,000 bets uh points bet on sprite so um people bet on sprite won the split the pot of 11,000 points oh my goodness okay betting on atari is like signing to be the drummer in spinal tap no the law of averages says i will survive this is this is when someone tunes in for the first time yeah somebody tunes in and goes what did i sign up for oh my goodness you should go back and track all the games keep detailed odds somebody can do that that's for sure uh it may not be me okay so let's um get back to my notes yes we we're talking about um frantic which is two games in one which is berserk and frenzy now i'm not super familiar with um frenzy from the arcade because i've never played it in the arcade i've never played it other than this game so let's just take a quick look at frantic for the arcade let's just go past the booting screen there we go 1982. So the player must man, uh, navigate a maze full of hostile robots. The goal of the game is to survive as long as possible and score points by killing robots uh, and traveling from room to room. The game has no end other than the player losing all of her, uh, his or her lives. The player is a gun which, with which to shoot the robots Robot and simple attack. intelligence of the robots means that they can often be tricked into shooting one right another. If the player lingers too long in a room, a bouncy smiley fo face known as Evil Auto appears and relentlessly chases the player. Evil Auto will destroy any robots in his way and can even move through walls. So you can see Evil Rob Auto right there, almost catching up to the player. Okay, so uh, when um, Daryl Spice Jr. posted this, new version he said frantic will be demoed at prge so i've resumed work on it just a minor update so far uh the humanoid animation has been increased from four to eight frames was trickier to do than i thought it would be uh the sound tool for the prior update had to be removed due to rom space needed for the additional humanoid graphics and color data um console switches tv type black and white Score to play, uh, display shows time remaining for vertical blank and overscan for debugging purposes. Left difficulty A, max robot stress test. Score will be read and the player does not lose a life so the player can play forever. Right difficulty A, frenzy special room test. Every room will be a special room. So we'll take a look at those after. Um, difficulty are only checked when starting a new game. And when I said I was going to play this tonight, he said, just a heads up, there's only two changes since you last featured Frantic, which was a long time ago uh august 2020 so three years ago i haven't played this game on the show so i thought you know it's a good time to play it again it's an awesome game what a good excuse is since he updated it um extra frames of animation removal of sound tool i'm hoping the extra frames of animation resolved the issue where a tank's homing shot passed through the humanoid's head without a collision occurring so let's play the game
Um, Frenzy is bananas compared to Berserk, VVG Double Down says. Frenzy has destructible walls, some reflect shots, and a shootable auto. Three hits. Frenzy, uh, better than frantic. Frenzy, too frantic. So instead of not being based on a middling Alfred Hitchcock movie, this one's not based on a middling Harrison Ford movie. Funny. Okay, let's switch over. Where's my remote control? There it is. Switch over to the 2600. Boot up the game. Ready. I remember to have your Atari box plugged in because this has voices, just like we heard in the arcade. So let's start with, see, you can see the screens. Ooh, that's loud. Loud for me. That's better. So we'll start with Berserk. Um, Game reset detected on console. No, that's a lie. <laughs> Game reset detected on console. Robot shots. Uh, we'll go in the middle with three. Stealth, that means they can become invisible. We won't do that right away. We'll leave it on lives three. Coins leave it bon detected in pocket. Coins detected in pocket. Very good voice. Bon bonus life, we'll leave it. Uh, you can play NTSC, PAL, or even CCAM. So let's go to start. And the player character is absolutely stunning looking. And the ah, extra frames of uh, animation on the uh, character. And the explosions are amazing, too. Uh, let me just bring up my chat window locally here. Nathan did an awesome job on the voices. He absolutely did. They're really, really clear. Intruder alert. Yeah, they're really, really clear. So the phenoms that he uh, chose are really... Okay, shoot your shoot your friend. I guess they're not really friends because they do shoot each other. So this is like an endless... Oh my god. Endless maze. Endless maze game. I should be a lot more careful. Oh god. Uh, that was terrible. Let's do it again. So in the first maze, they don't shoot. And the graphics are stunning on the player and the robots. Single line. Uh, changing color graphics. Very, very smooth animation. I believe Evil Auto comes out of the door that you start from. Yeah. Let's try and get these. There we go. Gotta learn the angles. Chicken fight like a robot. Chicken fight like a robot. Maybe a slight pause between chicken. Because it sounds like chicken fight like a robot. That might be a little bit better. An evil auto speeds up. When you kill all the robots, it's a bit better of a game. Yeah. Oh, extra life. Oh, and you can shoot their shots if you're absolutely perfect. I'm the bishop of battle. Oof. Yeah, it's very important. You do not get close. None like the 2600 Berserk. These guys are a tiny bit smarter in the fact that they won't run into walls. <laughs> ah! Oh, that was close. Oh, God. Can I get him? No. I have to do diagonal there. Ah! Mm, yeah, let's do this. Let's get these guys. Oh, and it's auto fire as well. Oh, they were right. Oh, oh where'd they all go? <laughs> Did they all shoot each other? I looked away for a second. It's nice to have asymmetrical mazes as well. Yes. Ah, looking away. Got the intruder. 
Oh my god. Ah! Is it every thousand to get a new life? Oh my god. They're just killing themselves all over the place. Chicken fight like a robot. Yeah, shoot each other. Do it. What? Did he shoot at the same time? Oh my god. Chicken fight like a robot. Oh, this one's a bit more mazy. I'll have to fight my way out. There we go. If you exit... Oh my god. That's over. Oh. I have to read that when I'm a bit more safe. There we go. Uh, if you exit the rooms going up, left, down, right, you'll end up in the same room. Oh, really? Does it have memory? A bit of memory for... God. Not working my angles very well in terms of movement. I'm dying. Oof! Shot is shot. Okay, let's try that. So, we went down. Okay, we'll memorize this. This screen. Uh, no, I'm not gonna make it. Okay. I'm gonna make so let's um, give the robots more shot. Sure, we'll give them stealth. We'll give more lives, and we're gonna do um, a round. Oh my god. Where'd he go? There he is. Okay, this is the starting room. Sort of a jagged staircase in the middle. So we'll go up, then right, then down. Where'd you go? There we go. So if they shoot a shot, the shot stays... Oh my god. I knew it. And then down, and then we go left. We should end up... Where'd he go? Oh, I probably shot his partner. Ah! Oh, what? Where'd he go? And this should be the staircase one again. There we go. Very nice. Ah. There we go. Oh my god. Stealth is brutal. Yeah, this is a CDFJ game. So it does use the ARM processor. 32K. Like Daryl posted in the chat. Thanks for hanging out, Daryl, with us. Are you going to PRGE this year, Daryl? Ah! Oh my god. Oh my god. No, not the ears. Oh, that's too bad. Uh, I think it was like 2015 when I met you at PRGE or 2016. And I got you to sign Medieval uh, Mayhem. Oh my god. Obviously, that was way before I started the show. Um, okay, so let's do the Frenzy style. Let's bring that down. Wall flicker, you can see the speed. One is fastest. Two, then slower, then slower. So let's do a three. There's one homing missile. Uh, let's turn off stealth, that's not fun. Let's, let's put it at five. 
Medieval Mayhem was my first homebrew card, got me into the whole scene. Uh, that was one of my early homebrew cards um, because I loved um, Warlord so much. I played that so much. Um, and when I saw Medieval Mayhem, I thought, oh my God, that's so, so good. It's like, you know. It's like an upgraded version of it with 100% better graphics and all the same gameplay. It's awesome. Oh, where am I? So this one has bouncing walls. So I can do... Ah! Oh, I ran into his explosion. So you can do banking bank shots if you're clever and or brave enough. Ah, too accurate with my shot. Shot a bullet right out of the air. Because this guy has like kind of a bouncy gate to him, you kind of have to watch out a little bit. Oh my god, it's homing! It's a bigger one. You have to kind of watch out when you're running around because his head kind of bobs up and down a tiny... Maybe it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. Ooh, either gonna... Let's do an angle. There we go. Now, because you can shoot through walls, you can now get things that you couldn't get before. Like this guy. There we go. Oh, nice! Unintentional bank shot! Oof. What? What? Who's shooting that? What is that? Is it because he's shooting into a bouncing wall and it's skittering along the wall? That was very unusual. Did you did you see that, Daryl? Where the bullet was coming from, not the robot? Very, very unusual. Uh, run! Oh, the bounce logic needs more work. Okay. That's what's going on. Oh, and that bullet kind of paused in midair. That was interesting. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, oh, too close. I guess it says that when you leave uh, when you leave a robot uh, one robot standing there oh he comes out so quick he cannot stay there Ooh, I, get it. I could do this maybe no he shot through the wall of course ah Oh my god. So challenging. So amazing. Oh, I can't stand there. What am I doing? Oh my god, it comes back in a different spot. Okay. One, one big change versus the Atari version is the robot explosion can take out other robots. Chain reactions are fun. Ooh. Yes, so let's uh, crank this up a little bit for more shots. Then we're going to run it run the stress test and you can run into the bullets as well or the explosions as well. So you have to be careful not to um, shoot too close to them. You can kind of get the jump on robots if you shoot through a wall like rapid shots through a wall uh, ah, ah, ah. Atari Vox yeah this the voices are so good ah, my foot touched the wall oh wait a second um, in the instructions for the arcade game, it says you can touch the wall in this version. Is this an intentional change that you um, 
uh, did Daryl? That um, you die when you touch the walls? Or did I read that incorrectly? The five phrases in Draconian took about 4k. And they're good. Draconian, one of my favorite games on the 2600, was done by Daryl. So good. Oh, not let yet implemented is not dying from touching the walls on this. Okay. So it is planned. Ah, quick, implemented. I just died. On this level, auto is bad. Hi, cats. You're crazy. Oh, God. Ah! Oh, my God, I saved myself. That one was deserved, that taunt. <laughs> I did run out immediately. Uh, let's get out of that. Can I get these? Not really. The kind of cool thing about shooting away the walls... Ooh, let's disable the robots. Did I do it? I think so. That means they can't move anymore if you shoot them. They can still shoot. Uh, ah! There we go. Oh, I keep forgetting that you can shoot auto. How many times can you shoot auto? Can you shoot him infinitely? I think it just said... Kill. Play. Attack. Shoot. Kill. Because I think I read in the arcade instructions you can only shoot him three times? Or was I mistaken at that? Come on, over here. Come on. Can I get him? Oh my god. Ah, can't get him. Another thing to implement. Oh, okay. Yeah. So just a counter for them. How many times auto has been shot? Sounds pretty, pretty quick to implement. Just a variable. Yeah, I got them all. Don't call me a chicken. There we go. He didn't call me a chicken. Is it actually related? Like, if I shoot all the robots, he won't call me a chicken? Ah, I got it. So the chicken fight like a robot. Oh, there's another thing I can shoot. Where is the humanoid? Lots of lives. Yeah, I've been getting them every thousand, and I'm doing better this time. Ah! Oh my god, I must have shot a shot. Which saved me. That time. Anyway. Did I set it for five homing missiles this time? I think I did. Oh. Ah, I killed myself. Ah, it's like Robotron. <laughs> There's so many people around me. Ah. Ah. So the chicken thing is related to how many robots are left. That's cool. Ah, it's too many. Ah. Oh, that was almost unavoidable. Oh, now it's getting hard. Now it's getting hard. Oh the bullets are fast now. Ah! Got him! Don't call me chicken. I don't know why I'm looking around for where I am. I, I'm... Oh, I can't shoot them. A robot is not a chicken. <laughs> that one's a good one. Oh, got him. <gasps> oh, run! Oh, so and I shot myself immediately. There we go. Let's, let's do this. Let's shoot my way out. There we go. Because I haven't done that yet. So you can shoot an, an exit for yourself. Oh my god, oh my god, oh he shot through! Damn it. Oh, yep, shoot your comrades. That's right. Oh, they can shoot through walls. Just never saw them do that before. 
memory. Not Five homing memory. missiles is not fun. Oh my god. Oh my god. I gotta leave. It's too dangerous. Oh, Super awesome. So let's look. Um, that was a factory room. Creates new robots. I see. So let's do the stress tests just to check out how many robots are possible. Um, so right difficulty A. So this should load up. Every room is a special room. So this is a special room because it's got the sleepy, sleepy robot there. Sleepy happy face. Which is pretty cool. Oh my god! You are nuts! When, did, <laughs> when does that happen? Why does that happen? Because I shot him so many times? No. Oh my god. Always getting angry. Is because I shot all the robots? Is that why he went all nuts? Ah! Oh, you can shoot them! That's an awesome, crazy face. Why do you keep running the walls? Ah! get all the robots in that Chicken, level. Like a robot. If you shoot auto in that room, it launches a lot of autos. Oh, because I shot auto, that's why. Let's try that again. Will that happen in this room? No, just in the other room. <sighs> okay. Then we'll do a robot stress test. I don't know if it works on. Oh, it does. Oh my god. That's a lot of robots. I'm guessing this is like maxed out robots. Worst case scenario. Pretty nice looking. Shoot him. Ah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Okay, disable the factory. They can still shoot. So the homing missiles only switch one direction. Oh my god. So if you want to eliminate the homing missile, get it to change directions, and then you're good. Square robot shots are the homing... Ah, oh, not paying attention. Looks like 12 bit. Oh, where am I? Looks like a 12 bit, just a little bit more than an 8 bit, right? <laughs> Ran into the explosion. I think this is going to be uh, going to impress people at PRG. They're going to love it. Has this ever been on demo at PRG before, uh, Daryl, that you know of? Very, very chatty. <laughs> very chatty. Attack. 
Uh, I want to try and kill all the, um... Let's go back. No. So hard. I'm going to go to a uh, happy smiley face level and try and defend myself against the crazy autos. Oh, if I can make it there. There we go. There we go. Now we're in the right spot. It's so tight. There's so many walls. Gotta leave a little bit of space. Ah. Blah, 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 blah. Good thing is they shoot themselves. Oh, this is so hard with the, all these enemies. <laughs> so hard. Come on, up. Up. There we go. Ah. There, I got it. Uh, I can't get rid of him. Oh, was able to get around him. No, no. Let's try and finish this level. Killing myself more than they kill me. Come on, up. Okay. No, don't have to go up. It was too close when I shot him. Exploded. Come on. Oh. Oh, so hard. Oh, so many bullets! <laughs> Just want to finish one one crazy level. Oh. Play a lot more tactfully. Ah, the, the guy's gonna come. Evil Auto's coming. Don't shoot him yet. No. Okay, go. And I ran into a wall! There we go. Now, run away quick, quick, quick. I was coming. Uh, I gotta make my path. Oh no! And I shot myself! Yeah, the flicker's not really... I mean, when it's full, it gets crazy, but... It's totally not even noticeable. Because... Probably because there's so much on the screen, it actually helps. <sighs> flicker's bad on the screen. Uh, it looks kind of the same. Make sure you're watching at 60 frames a second, though. It's not like set to 30 or something. Okay. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. Very, very awesome game. Um, I don't know how much there is left to do, but it doesn't seem like a ton left to do. Because everything's almost there. Um, is there a to-do list that you have, uh, left, uh, Daryl? Love this game, Joker said. Very awesome. Spice, yes, 100%. So the next game we're going to be playing is Tray 4. So let's load that up. From Jab. Now... 
This is by Alberto. This build is from um, just about a week ago. It's a 4K game. Um, other games he's made, Battleship, Caesar, Domino, Drop Ball, Elevator Game, Mastermind, uh, Leola, Lupin, Memory Game, Roulette, so uh, Scissors, Rock, Paper, Card Game, uh, Tray 4, and Words Games. He likes making puzzle games. Small puzzle games for the 2600, which are always nice to have. Yeah, the, that current ROM that I played is on... Come on. Is in the Atari Age Forum. All three of these games you can download in the Atari Age Forum right now. So the instructions are, on the home screen, you can choose one or two players using joystick left or right. There's one or two. We're going to play one, unfortunately. Unless you want to play Sprite. Do you want to play? He's not. He's not up for it. Um... In the case of one player, you'll play against the computer. There's a to-do list, but I haven't looked at it in a couple of years. Okay, very cool. Um, you are a waiter, and the aim of the game is to fill the tray in the center of the screen with four objects. Each turn, you have three moves available, green rectangles, that can be selected by moving the joystick left or right. By pressing shoot, the move is performed according to the following rule. The objects in the tray, let's just switch over to that, there you go. The objects in the tray correspond to those in dark green will be modified if present. They will be removed. If absent, they will be placed. For example, if I press the move selected in the figure, well you can't see that, but I'll, I'll play it, you'll see. I totally forgot James always does his due diligence and links the games on the show in the schedule. Yes, all games are linked. Um, in my show schedule and of course if you're watching on youtube later the link to the schedule is below in the comments and it links right to the thread and just usually just go to the last page of the thread where the update is and you can get it there um okay so i have two objects that looks like lobster um on the top left and a martini in the top right now, if I pick this one, it'll get rid of the lobster and fill it in on the bottom left. If I pick that one, it'll get rid of the martini and fill it in on the bottom right. So I have to kind of use a combo that will... I don't think I can on this move. So if I do that, and then I do that, it doesn't help. So, yeah, give up. And that's the computer's turn. So I left him with exactly, and then he picks the middle, and it'll fill it all in. Yep. Okay, so he got three points. Uh, yes. The spices, spice wares will work in a harmony. You don't need encore. Okay, so he's left me with that. Uh, if I do that, now he screwed me again. Nope. Can't do anything with that. Uh, yeah, you have to add those four more bits, RC7E, to your system. It gets three more points. Damn it. Oh, got it. Finally. Two points. Why did I only get two points? Weird. Yeah, you have to find those four bits somewhere. Maybe you can duct tape a four-bit system <laughs> to yours. Uh, there we go. But I only get two points. Do I get more points if I use more of the things on the screen hmm oh, i can't do it again bear pocock says i mean the cartridge bus is 12 bits ah. so uh, that doesn't help me hmm. oh can he do it no he can't ha 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 Ooh. get rid of those nope he screwed me yeah Use them all up. Oh, I do still have the difficulty switch is set to eight. Thank you very much. I don't think it uh, works on this one, but it's, they, I do often forget to switch them back. Oh, I can do it this time. Yeah. Now, do I get more than two points? So I got three points. You get more the more you use parts of it. Okay. Sometimes that opportunity isn't perfect but this time I can use two boom address bus okay 
The address bus on a 2600 is 12 bits? Is it? Uh, do that. This is not going to work. Yeah. It's very random, but he has to deal with what I've left him. If he clears it, then it I think it fills it in randomly. So this doesn't have anything for the top right, so it's pointless. Oh, two to the factor of 12 is 4K. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Because it has some address, address lines cut, doesn't it? And that's why it's a, um, oh, now I remember, forget the name, 62. Oh my God, I can't, be can't believe I forgot the name of the chip. 6507 instead of 6502. Yeah, I can't do this one either. 6507, yep. Uh, oh, see, if I do that, I'll only get two points, but I am destroying him, so that's fine. Luckily, they people worked around it and was a, were able to do bank switching, which is nice. So if I do that, then I do that. But the biggest thing you can ex access is 4K at a time, which is probably fairly annoying for programmers because <laughs> it's not much. But we've got pretty amazing games, even though you can only access four at a time. So it ends up, yeah, just random. Uh, this isn't going to work. I have to have to select one and then press it again. This would be much better two players. 6502 was the discount CPU, so 6507 was like the rubber band to an index card on the counter of a corner store. <laughs> it's like, 6502 is cheap. We agree. But do you have anything cheaper? That's, what, that's pretty much how it went. <laughs> We need to save five cents a chip. But hey, you know, it succeeded and they made tons of money. Tons of money. Okay, well, I need something in the bottom right corner, so I will press that. Man, then there's nothing for the top right. What is this? It's as confusing as the VHS board game pile of bullets. Okay, um, I'll try and explain it again. So you're trying to fill all four items, the soup, the bell, the martini glass, and the lobster. And you can turn on and off those items on your tray using the three things at the bottom. So this middle one only has one in the bottom right corner, and I'm missing one in the bottom right corner. So if I press it, it will fill it in. Now, if something's already there, it'll take it away. Not sure whether the 128 bytes of RAM or the 4K of ROM is more limiting. I suppose it depends on the game. Well, both have been surpassed by inventive people. <laughs> so those aren't limiting. But if you were limited to both of those, I don't know, because with 4K, you can't really make a massive game. I can't really do anything here. But also, with 128 bytes, you can't keep track of a lot of things. So if I do that, there's nothing in the top left, so it's, I can't do anything. So I'll give them a blank. Oh, I get it. Interesting concept. Is it based on something? If anything, this is kind of a twist on the game Lights Out, or wherever that came from, where... You click something and then the thing surrounding that thing disappears. It's kind of the turning off and on. Or actually the game Go. There you go. That's what this kind of is a play on. It's really raining. If I do this, then I do this, then I do this. Winner! Oh, it's to 21 or to 20. Nice. I did it. Well, that's 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 the game. <laughs> it's not much more to it. 
I think it'd be a lot more fun with two people. But alas, the cats are sleeping, so they can't help me. Are you going to play? No. Not even with treats would they play. Is Go similar to Othello? I've never played Go. I believe they're the same same thing. Maybe slightly different rules? Not sure. Yeah. So the game No Pressure Cooker. Yeah, it's the opposite of Pressure Cooker. It's it's the Relax Cooker. It's like you have as much time as you want to take the food from the kitchen. So I, I'm guessing this is kind of like you're trying to fill your tray and there's like items that can't be moved on other trays that you can fill with your trays. I'm not quite sure. Um, I mean, Gamma Dev says, I mean, look how better supercharger games are. Adding extra pseudo RAM makes big difference between Parker Brothers Frogger and SC version. Oh yeah, the supercharger was, look at those games. They're, they're absolutely incredible. There's an RPG on it. You get better graphics because you can just store more stuff. Um, you just get a much more complex gameplay. I mean, I think it had, how much did it have? Two? Two K of RAM? And six K of ROM? Was that the supercharger amounts? Was that what it was? Okay, so we're going to move on to our third six K of, six K of RAM. Yeah, that's enormous for a 2600. Enormous. So we're going to move on to Shattered Earth by Rick Pryor, Kerry Jimbo. But how much ROM? 2K of ROM. 2K of ROM? 6K of RAM and only 2K of ROM? Obviously you can use... That's weird. Oh, technically it's all RAM. That's why. Yeah, it's loaded off of tape. So the supercharger had... What was on the 2K of ROM? I guess the loader for the supercharger. Did it have any, like, fonts or anything in it? The ROM is the BIOS. Oh, yeah, okay. So it's technically pretty much all RAM. That's, that's, that's super Ready. cool. And it was kind of the first multi-cart because you could program your games and load your games on the super cart, uh, supercharger. Okay, so we're going to go on to our third and last game of the night, Shattered Earth which I just love the um, atmosphere of it. So this... Oh, stop, 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 stop. Just scrolled, of course. Um, Kerry Ajimbo posted um, on Saturday about this. Here's a one-level demo ROM that will hopefully be on display in the Atari Age booth at PRG next month. The basic concept of the game is the same. Rescue four survivors and get them to the space station before the timer runs out. Here's the main changes. Left difficulty switch, B, restart the game, restart on the same screen after dying, and A, restart on a random screen. Ah. Right difficulty switch, B, unpause, A, pause. Okay. Color black and white switch, uh, choose between color and black and white palettes. And this was only in black and white before, which I thought looked really, really cool. But some people, so just like some people don't watch black and white movies, I guess some people wouldn't play a black and white game. I'm not sure on that. But uh, it's a cool, cool addition. And uh, deterministic levels. He said, you wanted them. Well, one of you did anyway. You got them. Levels are created as you move through them. But once a room has been created, it remains the same for the remainder of the level. Okay, so let's play it on the color version first, on the easy mode, I guess. So your little ship, very fast. Oh my god. Ah, run away. Oh, I do have auto fire. Okay, that helps. Oh, there's dude. No, dude, come back. Yeah, you can reset the screen by going back on it. Oof. Which resets the dude. Oh, hey dude. Let's reset you. Kind of cheesing it. Now this reminds me of Cosmic Art. Arc. So this guy's pretty easy because he doesn't change position. I th Oh, he does change position. <laughs> Just as I said that. Of course, you can hide in here. Now, he can't get you in here. I swear he didn't. No, he does change position. It's just really subtle. Okay, so I've got two guys, and my timer is 
Ah, there we go. It's counting down. Ugh. So there's little hidey holes here that you do have to use. Uh-oh. There's the third guy. I haven't found the ship yet, so I think I'm going to die. Of course, I've been talking, which doesn't help. Oh, dead end. There's another dude. And I think the positions... Oh, there's the guy. Okay, now I have to find the ship. Just have to motor it. Motor. Ah, oh, I ran out of time. No! Games always hear you say things. If you don't think games have AI, you are mistaken. If you say, oh, this game's really easy, well, it just got harder. Oh, where's the dudes? Come on, little dudes. There you are. Oh, let's reset you. It's kind of cheating. Kind of cheating. Ooh, ooh. Okay, we gotta go up. Nope, forgot. Up is not an option. Ah. Let's go down. Let's go to the right. I can't remember how big the grid is. I think it's like nine by nine or something. Oh, a dead end. Like absolute dead end. That guy just goes in a pattern, but he does shoot at you, or where you were in. Anyway. Oh, another guy. This one's taking longer to find the guys. Even though I'm moving fast. How many lives do you get? Or does it just, like, take away your time? Those are probably the most annoying, because you can't just motor through it. Uh, have to wait. Oh, ran out of time again. And also, if you say this is so hard, it gets harder. <laughs> uh, sometimes. Oh, let's reset you. Oh, there's a guy on the left, too. Oh, I might be able to get this game. Come on, reset. Okay. Usually, I say... If, oh, my God. If I say that, oh, I'm not doing very well, I get a little bit better at it. So I think I, I maybe don't stress out as much. Ah, another guy. Nice. Don't think you can invoke a dude. They are determined position in the map. And it doesn't matter what kind of screen they appear on because they float through every kind of... Oh, there he is. Okay, I've got them all. Now I have to find the ship. Nah, it's not there. That's a dead end. I don't think the ship appears. Oh, Do I lose time? A little bit of time. Oh, it was a bit, bit of a screen flip there. Uh, let's keep going up. Ah, uh, these guys. Oh, where's the ship? I'm almost dead. No, not these guys. <gasps> dead end. No. Oh, now I'm dead. Oh. Kind of crossed the barrier because I died. And ran out of time. So let's switch to black and white. So I think that is super cool looking. See, it's already helping. Makes it more like, uh, I don't know, 50 sci fi. I think I described it as last time. I'll reset you. Oh, there's another dude there. Three. Three out of four. See, the black and white is helping a lot. Uh, dead end. Oh, another dude. Good. Okay, now I have a chance. Just have to take it. Um, oh, there it is. I found it. Oh, no! What am I going to have to do? Oh! Do I have to go around to the right? Maybe. Oh, I do. Yes. Did it! Okay. Ah! Ah! Two! Two already! Three! Nice. Oh, come back here. Oh, my God. 
three, dead end. Ooh, that was close. Oh, God. So if you enter a boulder screen, watch this, from the top, it's not a boulder screen. But if you enter from the bottom, it is a boulder screen. Interesting, because it knows that if you come from the top, you're gonna die instantly on a boulder screen because the boulders come from the top. You could have made the boulders come from the bottom. I've seen screens like that, say, um, oh, hello. Uh, what am I thinking of? Keystone, uh, Keystone Capers. Um, the things on the levels, yes, start from the opposite side you enter from. So the shopping carts, if you come on one side, the shopping cart will always come from the other side. So that is a way to keep the screen the same if you wanted to do that. Because, I mean, this is space. It doesn't, there's no really gravity really, right? Yep, 70s style, black and white switch. I thought, oh, I thought that was a cheap death. Oh no, when I just died all of a sudden. Oh my God. You can actually navigate. You can actually navigate through those. Or you used to be able to. I wonder if I can get it pixel perfect. No. Oh, maybe I had it there. Damn it. No. Nope. <laughs> Ah! Metal Lunar says, I don't think I've ever actually played through a game in black and white before in all this time. Really? When I was playing in the 80s, all I had was a black and white TV. So everything was in black and white. Oh, come on. I think this thing is positioned so you can't... No. I give up. Okay, so... Uh... Oh, I'm still playing. I have like two seconds of time. There we go. I remember Atari Age Magazine advising switching to black and white to make flickery Pac-Man less flickery. I don't think it works that way, does it? <laughs> okay, so let's change the left difficulty switch to restart on a random screen when you die. I don't think it's... Oops. That's not what I wanted. Oops. Ready. Uh... Luckily, these games load really fast. So, if I don't die, then this won't really come into effect. Oh, hello, dude. So what do you think? You like the black and white better or the color? I really like the black and white. It's just so, such a strong look. Hello. Three. I haven't died yet, so that option really hasn't come into effect yet. Those guys are pretty easy because they just shoot the same way every time. So I've got four. Let's go down still. There it is. Boom! Without dying. Less color switching could save flicker. But I think all the sprites are in the same color in Pac-Man anyway. Yeah, there was four ghosts. They were all using the second player. They all flashed at 15 hertz, like no matter what. Uh, where they were, there is no intelligent flicker. No flicker management whatsoever. Oh, come on, dude. There we go. So switching to black and white would not make them flicker less. But... The colors might help. Like, like just the fact that it was black and white. But did it actually change the colors in Pac-Man when you switched to black and white? Was there actually a, a proper setting that actually changed the game somehow? Those guys only shoot horizontally. I'd be very interested in finding out. We're going to load up Pac-Man after this. So it should put me in a random spot. There we go. So that doesn't help. Because now I have no idea where I am. 
Could be retracing old steps that I've been to before. Yeah, that does make it harder if you do die. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, I've checked out this whole area. And good luck. Oh, I ran out of time. There we go. Maybe just lessen the effect because gray is close to gray. Well, if you think about phosphor die off, the brighter the phosphor, the longer it takes to die off. So if the ghosts are a brighter white or gray as opposed to like a, a blue or whatever color they are. I made the black crown black, which made the ghosts easier to see. Ah, so it might actually help. Well, Ready. let's see. Because we've played all the games. We can just uh, fool around now. Let's see. Pac-Man. So let's go. There it is, black and white. There is color. So let's go to black and white. So it is on a black background. Well, we'll start the game. Yeah, but see, the ghosts are white on a black background. So technically, yes, it would make it easier to see. It still looks like trash on this, but... Oh my god. Terrible. Ghosts are acting like fifth graders going after a ball. Or five year olds going after a ball. They just clump together. It's like, there's the Pac Man. Get him. We're all going to get you at once. We don't have any rules. They don't even, they don't even turn around. There we go. Ball chasers. <laughs> yes, they are ball chasers. Okay, ball chasers, come on in. Makes it easier to get them, I suppose. Get all four of them. So, yeah. I would say it, that is true that it is easier to see the ghosts. Um, not on this, because I'm not using a CRT or anything that approximates phosphor die-off. But I was playing it on Stella and uh, put the phosphor at something that uh, simulates television. Then the effect would... You could probably simulate that effect and actually measure it by doing a recording of the phosphor. There we go. All four ghosts. Before I missed an opportunity here to make the game in color but have proper arcade colors. Black background and a bright blue maze. Now, of course, the rumor is always he did it because you weren't allowed at Atari to make anything a black background except for space. But I think I read somewhat recently that he did it because he just wanted to have a blue background. <laughs> it just looked different. Okay, that's good. I'm going to hook everything up to my CRT now to try it out. Who would have thunk something could ever get me to play this game once Pac-Man 8K come out? And sometimes not even in space. That's right. Slightly hard to know when the ghosts are no longer consumable. They go a little bit different color. Yeah, it's, it is much harder. Okay, so one thing I did want to try is now on the subcart. So let's just piece together this subcart. The one thing I did want to try is the audio with stereo... Um, ooh, I don't know if I have a stereo game. Anybody know a stereo game that I can quickly try out? Okay, so let's load up. Let's plug in the stereo adapter to the subcart. Hopefully this is... Yeah, I should be fine plugging this in. There we go. There's the plug for it. As long as I get everything the right way around. I think that's the direction it goes. No bent pins? Good. Okay. So let's turn off that and take out the AVG cart. What? that in there. Ooh, actually I should put the SIO cable as well. There we go. 
fucking hook this through the load SIO games or ATRs. Plug that in. Plug in the SIO cable. Plug in stereo audio adapter. Luckily, I have one very handy from my 7800. There we go. Plug that in. This may or may not work because this has. Mm, now we'll have to see. Okay. Turn that on. Switch over to Atari 8 bit input. I may have to. Why is it red? That's weird. Oh, probably because it has no idea. There we go. And, oh, I don't have a joystick plugged in. do have something done that I didn't even know about before, and I did it today. Why is it red? It's so weird. That you can encode video files on the, or you can encode video files to be played back in an Atari 8-bit system. Oh, that is not the right style. There we go. So I did encode a file. Let's take a look at it. It may not have sound, so let's see. Oh, it does. Nope. Can't hear it. Now, why can't I hear it? Probably because it's outputting through the subcart. Ooh, can I change where which audio it picks? I don't think so. How am I going to do that? Focus. Yeah, let's play that again. Uh, I wish there was audio. Oop. Maybe if I use the joystick. So yeah, I encoded this. It took a long time to figure out how to encode this, but I did it. So uh, yeah, it looks pretty good. You can't really read it. The resolution is, let's say low, <laughs> really low. There is audio. Can you guys hear it? How come I can't hear it? You can hear it. Okay. But I can't. Hmm. That volume's not down, is it? Let me play it once more. Oh, now I can hear it. It was just really low for it. Okay. Hooray! Sound works. Yeah, it's just faint. Okay, I've cranked it up. Okay, so I've got the subcart in, but the audio is just going through the normal. Ugh, sucks. Mm. Are any of these in stereo? It's a good question. Commando is good music. Let's see if this... That's not the any key. Okay, I'm going to switch over to an input. Oh, I don't think it's outputting. Well, this is just me fooling around, so. No, it's not outputting through the stereo output. I think I have to do some configuration. Yeah. But anyway, it works. The cart works, which is good. Uh, 
It's really good, too. It sounds like the theme. That's good. That is good. Okay. Well, I'll have to fool around with that for the next um, Atari 8-bit day to try and get uh, get the stereo part working, which is very cool. I was able to get a stereo output without having to mod my system. It made me very, very happy. And I have an extra multi-card, so, because I do have multiple um, Atari computers. Spiceware says, just did some debugging in Stella. The ghost colors are CC, DC, EC, and FC. Uh, those are the original colors or the black and white colors? Not very distinct colors. Where's the stereo output? It, there's um, a stereo pokey slash Kovacs emulator within the cartridge, which outputs to um, headphone jack that you can plug in. Um, now I have to look up in the manual how to switch over so it, the computer uses the cartridge audio instead of the onboard audio. Maybe it's auto sensing. I'm not sure. Yeah, because I just got it today, so I have to I have to look into that some more. Um, what graphics mode is being used to play it back? I am not sure. Uh, what was the resolution? It was like 160 across and 192 vertically, but it doesn't fill the 192. It's padding it. Uh, 120 or something like that. Yeah. Need big fonts. Yeah, if you want. For video, it is actually seems okay, and you can download some videos on there. Just let Pac-Man sit with the color cycling, see the ghosts of the different colors. Oh, okay. Pac-Man is a lot clearer in black and white on a CRT, but I think it's only because it's not a blazing blue background with all the other colors to go that go horrible with it. Yeah. Blue was not a great choice, and I have no idea why he chose that. It just does not make any sense at all. It's so weird. But can't change history. That's how it is. Let's see what's coming up on the show. Pray, uh, we played Frantic, Tray 4, and Shattered Earth today. Frantic, a masterpiece. Um, just needs like a couple things to make it complete. Probably some more things that Spiceware wants to change as well, but it seems so feature complete. Tray 4, fun uh, little game. Very, very simple. Be good for kids. Um, two player, it'd be a much more interesting. Shattered Earth fun maze type game you know i'm not super good at maze games but uh i love the aesthetic of it it's so cool um and uh so that'll be demoed at prg along with a bunch of games being uh, demoed every every day it seems like oh this here's my demo build for prge that's awesome so the next show i'm probably gonna do an 8-bit show that's gonna be on friday with uh erlen uh, we're going to be playing Mr. Hop, Druidarium, and some other game. Oh, polls closed. That took a long time. First rumor from AA Forums is, I heard blue instead of black because Atari only black allowed black for their space games. We're also concerned about Burnin. Not sure if this is correct, but plausible. No, he, um, Todd Fry, um, debunked that, I believe. Yeah. 80 by 96. That's probably it. Yes. Um, then coming up, we don't have a date for this yet, but we have the exclusive world premiere of Doom Slayer Edition on the Jaguar. And boy, does it look sweet if you've been checking out the screenshots and the little clips that uh, Cyrano J has been, re been releasing. So we're lucky enough to get that exclusive world premiere coming up very soon. So I think I'll be able to put a date against that super, super soon. Maybe next Tuesday maybe we'll see next not this friday but next friday we're gonna have the light gun special with the exclusive world premiere of ducks away um and so we're gonna play all light gun games we're gonna be doing them on 2600 7800 and also the 8-bit system um all homebrew light gun games so we're not gonna play the classic of which there's not very many but there have been homebrew games made on all those systems for the light gun. Um, 
or I should have read the next comment. You have the forums memorized. I read a lot of the forums. <laughs> I read them every day for hours. It's bad, but you have to, to do the show. You have to keep up on things. You have to keep up on new games coming out and crazy things happening. Um, and then uh, after that, we're going to be playing the ABBUC 2023 contest entries. Very looking forward to that. There's some really nice ones that look like they're entered in from some of the videos and screenshots that have been released. Usually it takes two days because of the entries. So we'll be doing that on uh, a Tuesday and a Friday, 3rd and 6th. Oh, October 3rd, my birthday. So that'll be my birthday present is to play ABBUC <laughs> contest entries. Um, and the next time you see me, I will have a tattoo. Oh my God. It'll be very, very fresh. Getting it on Thursday. So it'll be still wrapped up a little bit. Um, Andrew Davy said, maybe Todd just thought, why stop here and decide to make it as ugly as he possibly could? Yeah. Um, and we're also going to be doing an After Dark at some point. It looks like the 6th. Because I think that's the latest we can do it unless it's postponed. Dragon's Havoc in 1942. Very looking forward to 1942. I can... I'll have to look at the rules on that. I can do very, very uh, well on 1942 if I'm on a good day. What tattoo? I have not said yet. Nobody has guessed exactly where I'm going to get the tattoo. They've guessed the foot area, but not exactly where on the foot. I, I said I'd give away a sticker for the person who guessed where on my foot. But people gave up last time. Um, and then they didn't even bother trying to... Well, they, they tried to figure out what tattoo I would get. How many areas does the foot have? Well, it has, like, bottom, top, left, right, back, toes, ankle, um bottom of toes <laughs> i don't know uh yeah depends how yeah you could how well it has to have names for parts of it i gave the general names but it's too late nobody guessed it during that day so no sticker for you a cat bite in the toe i already have that um permanent tattoo it's kind of fading now but uh so it's not so permanent the new nail is almost growing growing nail it's kind of weak and tiny no one's getting a tattoo on the bottom of the foot no um and when i was talking with the tattoo artist they were a little bit concerned about the placement because of the bottom of the foot it's so thick and it wears away so quickly and it's so hard to tattoo that she advised strongly against it being in that area and it also just wears away really quick um, just because of the turnover of skin but uh, I think it's just a difficult area to tattoo because you have to get it subdermal and the dermal is very thick on your foot um, uh, well I can tell you where it is because nobody guessed it is on the back of my let's go to foot cam so I can actually show you cat cam large there we go so, so it's on my right foot and it's going to be on the back of the foot going around from here around to the same on the other side so it goes from there around to the other side no sticker for you nope no <laughs> sticker for you uh if you guess what it is you'll get 10 stickers you're going to charge us extra for the foot cam content? Yes. Double subscriptions for foot cam. Yeah, you have to go to my uh, OF account for the foot cam. We're going to turn off the foot cams. We'll put a block right here so you can't see our feet anymore. Um, so I don't know how painful it's going to be. Uh, we'll see. I have a pretty high pain tolerance. Uh, there's no prep to be done. Just make sure your foot's clean wonder what they think of you know tattooing people's feet uh, they're like oh god i hope they wash their feet um do not follow me yeah stay 10 foot 10 feet away from me at all times or do not talk to me um so i'll have to walk home in uh sandals or flip flop flip flops actually so that 
nothing is touching my foot. Um, luckily, it's only a couple blocks away, um, but I won't be able to pick up Tanya from the airport because I drive with that foot, and it just it'd be against the floor and everything like that. A lot of feet weirdos out there. Yeah, eh, if they're into feet, whatever. Whatever gets you off and doesn't hurt anyone. Um, isn't that the same location that the nine cast of the Lord of the Rings all had a tattoo? Did is that the location on their feet? Did they all get it in the same place? Lord of the Rings. Uh, tattoo location. Uh, oh, that's a bunch of people who have Lord of the Rings tattoos. Um, matching tattoos. There we go. Now, where were they? Oh, yep, yep. No, not everyone got in the same place. Two people got on their, um, on their, on the side of their foot, like where I was describing. Um, t three, three of them got it on their shoulder. One of them, Orlando Bloom, got it on his wrist right there. Uh, one person got it on their side. Yeah, they're all over the place, but. You are right, some of them got it on the side of their feet, which is like the most hidey, hidey place to get it. Yeah. So here's, yeah, I might as well show you. Um, there's one tattoo there, one tattoo on the wrist, on the shoulder, shoulder, shoulder for Ian McKellen, a uh, foot for somebody, another foot for somebody, shoulder for... Vigo Mortensen. Um, yeah, so all over the place. They had nine in Elvish. Okay. One got them in some place. Even the internet can't show. Well, there you go. They didn't want to show off that tattoo. Just for special people. Um, mm, it is not black ink. It is. It does have color in on my tattoo. So you guys will see it. You'll see it on Friday. And it's perfect person to have on the show on Friday um, because erlen has got lots of tattoos. Or one big one? Uh, he's got a one or more tattoos. I don't even know if he knows that I'm getting one. That'll be interesting. Um, so, this is... We're done. Wait, is the black and white switching color? <gasps> it now is. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, BB color. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Because I have played games on the show going, what? What is happening in this game? And I'm having trouble. Uh, RC70 says, my wife is working on a leg sleeve. I only have one tattoo and it's my wedding ring. Her initials. Oh, that's a nice tattoo. Uh, it'll be the 2600. Yeah, it, it, that's what I have tattooed on my heel. 2600 plus on, the, on my heel. I believe I believe in the product <laughs> so intensely. <laughs> um, so thanks for hanging out with me, RC Seven E, Double Down, Gamma Dev, Vitoko, Nostalgic, uh, Charles Whelan, uh, Charles Donny Mao, Carl G, uh, Spiceware. Thank you for being here while we play your game. Uh, Chitlet La, Trey Guy. Who else? Who else? Who else? Mental Lunar 7, B. Larson. Um, who did I get everyone? Dan AVC, BR Pocock, uh, Joker0136. Ooh, lots of names today. Thank you for watching, even though I'm on my own today. Uh, it went way better than I thought it would on my own. Because I swear I've done a show on my own before, and it was absolutely painful. Luckily, I didn't have a lot to read out for the games. If I did have a lot to read out, or if it was like a really involved game where I had to write things down, then I would be in trouble. Um, but I don't want to make it a habit. I like having a guest, other than the kitties. Hey, hey, kitties. Yeah, fluffy cats. Um, thank you, Dan. It was a fun show and fun games. And uh, so we will be back on Friday afternoon. So I will see you guys then. Bye-bye, everyone.